Yeah. So my name is Swami Subramanyam. Uh, I'm based in Bangalore. I have trained as a medical doctor, then did my post-graduation in uh, clinical pharmacology. And I went uh, abroad to get my PhD in uh, neuroscience. So uh, I, my last uh, career move was from a large corporate Abbott Laboratories, uh, where I was working in nutrition and to start my own company called Nutria, where we develop nutrition product for other companies. So uh, even in developed countries, uh, they have not given su sufficient importance to sleep, but India is really at the lower level in terms of uh, a country that uh, gives sleep uh, importance in its daily dialogue. In fact, most general practitioners will not ask you about your sleep, uh, but they will treat all other conditions, knowing very well that sleep, in fact, influences many of those conditions, including hypertension and type 2 diabetes. So um, we all know that if, you, if people don't get enough sleep, then uh, their cognitive function is impaired the following day. And uh, on average, at a population level, we need about seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, statistics have shown that about 20% of Indians are actually diagnosed with insomnia, and 40 to 50%, and this might be a larger number in big cities, don't get enough sleep. And they might not be diagnosed as insomniacs, but they are sleep deprived, and that's for a variety of reasons. And uh, when they are sleep deprived, there are many things that happen in the brain that affects the next day's work. One is their ability to concentrate and do uh, constant, constantly, sometimes even monotonous work is actually impaired because if, a, if you're a factory worker and you go to assembly line and you're doing the same task over and over again, the tendency is to fall asleep when you're doing the work. So there's a high rate of factory accidents as a result of sleep deprivation. In terms of higher level functions, corporate executives, uh, CEOs and COOs, they are taking very important decisions during the daytime. It's been shown that sleep affects everything from your cognitive judgment, your ability to make good judgments, make good decisions. In fact, uh, people who are sleep deprived are usually very risk, uh, they don't understand risk very well. They take more risks than people who, are, who have slept adequately. Uh, their ability to uh, understand incoming information and act appropriately in response to that is also impaired. So many accidents, uh, industrial accidents, have taken place as a result of sleep deprivation. One common uh, thing that we, we've all heard of is Chernobyl, uh, which actually took place at night because the operators of the nuclear reactor did not respond appropriately to what was an emerging accident. In India, Bhopal also took place at night. And the operator, uh, the, if you, if you re go back to the Bhopal story and you see the sequence of events, around 11.30 they came to know that the pressure was going high in the MIC tank. They actually went for a tea break after that. By the time they came back, the pressure had gone so high that the tank was leaking. So clearly, it was inappropriate for them to take a tea break when they saw, uh, saw that there was a problem in the tank. Perhaps because they were sleep deprived, they were working the night shift. That might have been the reason that they were slow to react. And this has happened over and over again in many in accidents, including Three Mile Island, Exxon Valdez. So I think that's at a very high level. But even at day-to-day -day operations level, they may not have massive consequences but they have small incremental consequences for our work. If you open the newspaper on any day, there is always some coverage of a road accident. If you look carefully, you will find most of these road accidents take place early in the morning, between about 3 and 4 or 6 a.m. in the morning. Many drivers are unable to understand how sleep impaired they are and how much it impairs their driving. Especially these days, when you have straight highways, very little traffic, very little light or uh, any other disturbance, it is easy to fall asleep at the wheel because the early morning time is actually a very sleep prone time for somebody who's sleep deprived. And one of the characteristics of these sleep accidents, sleep uh, based, sleep depri deprivation caused road accidents is that the person will not apply the brake because he's sleeping. He does not respond to any problem. So as a result, the collisions are usually at very high speed and are usually often fatal. This is a very problematic issue. I, th I don't think it is adequately identified or spoken about. We could do a lot better in terms of training our drivers to understand when they are sleep deprived and what simple measures they can take to avoid it. So the, the thing that got me interested uh, to write this book was uh, I was working on a project developing a nutrition product for promoting sleep. And we had actually developed it. I had done a lot of research. We wanted to make sure it was evidence-based and 
It was uh, robustly developed. So we did a small clinical study to see whether it was working. Unfortunately for us, it didn't work. So in the process of converting a lemon into lemonade, I said I will repurpose whatever research I had done for that product into actually writing a book on sleep. Because I also realized at the same time, there was a lot of misconceptions about sleep in, in the popular domain. And I thought it was important that the science was conveyed in a very simple way to people so that they understood sleep well in a, in a broader perspective so that they could take the right response. Yeah, so uh, this is the uh, book I wrote, uh, it's called Mastering Sleep. I think of it as a science storybook, meaning that I've tried to explain the science behind sleep and sleeping well in a very simple way, in a story-like fashion, so that all people can understand it. The reason it is important to understand the science, even for lay people, is that unless you understand the science, you will not put in the behavioral effort required to make a change in your behavior. For example, despite everything we know about sleep, most of us go without sleep. Why is that? Because it's hard to make those behavioral changes unless you are convinced that it is important. And I think I've tried in my book to give enough science in a very simple storybook-like fashion so that people can make those behavioral changes. Right. So one of the things that you will commonly hear people saying is that we don't understand why we sleep. This is true at one level, but it's inaccurate at multiple levels. The reason we, they say that is because they don't have, we don't have a big theory about sleep, one grand unifying theory that says sleep is for this. Sleep has evolved over four billion years since life has been on this planet. Organisms that even four billion years ago, our organisms were sleeping. So it's obviously a very vital function. All organisms sleep, all animals sleep. So in terms of humans, over time, sleep has evolved to perform many functions. One of the key functions is you acquire all these memories when you are awake. You need time for the memories to get transferred from short-term storage to long-term storage. This is one of the very important things that happens during sleep, consolidation of memories. The other thing is the brain is one of the most metabolically active organs in the body. It consumes 20% of the energy that we generate. All this metabolism results in a lot of metabolic waste. Now, when the brain is functioning during the daytime, it is most inappropriate for the brain to do the cleaning out function. For example, to give an analogy, in the cities, large cities, you won't, don't find the garbage trucks working at 10 a.m. in the morning when the traffic is at its peak. They usually come out at night. So in the same way, the brain also does its cleaning function at night when, when, when we sleep. There is, a, there is a separate lymphatic channel for the brain called the glial lymphatic or G-lymphatic that actually clears out metabolic waste during sleep. And recently it has been found that if you don't sleep, metabolic waste accumulate in the brain and that can be an important causative factor in the uh, development of dementia or Alzheimer's disease.